So when I was a young kid, I was, I was 10 years old and uh, I was in school and I didn't struggle with, with English or writing or science or things like that. I, I struggled with holding still. And I would sit there and I would just start tapping and tap, 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 tap. And it got so bad to the point that everybody would look at me and they'd call me the twitcher, they'd call me nicknames, they would just yell at me for, for tapping in class. And I don't know if you ever sat next to somebody that, that's just like clicking their pen or, or tapping, but it gets annoying super fast. And uh, I'll never forget, it got so bad and people would tell me to, to stop tapping and, and it eventually got to the teachers. And the teachers would say, Clint, you have to stop tapping, stop tapping, stop tapping. And uh, I remember looking at the teachers and, and them looking back at me and most one teacher, she, she, she flipped. She, she said, that's it go to the principal's office. And so she sent me as a 10 year old to the principal's office. So I took that long walk down the hallway to uh, turn the right corner, walked into the office, sat down, looked at the principal. Principal looked at me and he said, okay, why are you here? And I said, I like to hit stuff. He's like, what are you talking about? I, I said, I just have a hard time sitting still. And he's like, okay, well not anymore. He said, I, 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 I want you to go back to class. And when you do, I want you to just, just sit on your hands. Just when you feel like you got to tap, sit on your hands. And so I went back and that worked for about five seconds. I sat on my hands. That didn't work because when I did, I, all of a sudden my, my feet would start tapping. And it was just this constant problem of just not being able to hold still and hitting things and moving. And I would talk to people and I was just this just little ball of craziness energy that just, just did not work in a classroom environment. And I had a teacher one day, his name was Mr. Jensen, and he yelled at me. And he said, Clint, stay after class. And I remember thinking as a 10 year old, this is it, like I am getting kicked out of school as a 10 year old, I'm done. And the class left and it was completely empty, empty classroom, me and Mr. Jensen. And he went to the back of the room and he sat down and he told me to come sit next to him. And I, I walked in there and I sat down, I looked at Mr. Jensen, this old teacher, white hair, glasses, uh, had been teaching for a long time and he looked at me and he said, Clint, I've been watching you. And I said, what are you talking about? He's like, I, I just, and I, and I need you to know something, you're not in trouble. Okay. But I, I wanted to ask you a question. I have one question that I need to ask you. And he said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And I was remember I was 10 years old at this time and I was like I can't even spell drum like what are you talking about like no what do you mean he's like I I see that in you like I see that ability that you have to just move he's like you could do something with your right hand and then you can do something completely different at the same time with your left hand he said you, you use this big word he said you're ambidextrous and I had no idea what that meant he said but you just you have this ability to just do things that most people can't he said can you tap your head and rub your belly and I was like I, I could do it. And he said, he's like, Clint, I, I don't think you're a problem. I think you're a drummer. And I'll never forget, he reached back and he opened up the top drawer of his desk and he reached inside and he pulled out my very first pair of drumsticks. And uh, I was 10 years old. And uh, I, that was one of those single moments in time where somebody believed in me and saw something within me that I didn't even see within myself. And that happened throughout my whole life. And that story of Mr. Jensen really, I mean, uh, people look at my life and they see all the things that I've done and accomplished and they go, oh man, Clint, that's so, you're so great. And it really, it, it's, it's not, it wasn't me, it was other people believing in me so much to the point that I believed in myself. So much to the point that I had the strength and the ability to, uh, to, to believe, to uh, do hard things, to dream, uh, to stretch myself just because other people said I could and other people said you've got what it takes and other people believed in me. And so that was uh, an amazing experience where he gave me those, those two drumsticks that changed my life. And for, for it's now almost, 20 years, I'm 29, I'm almost 30 years old. For 20 years, I, I played the drums. And I've tried to keep those drumsticks in my hands as much as possible. And, uh, and I'm not the best drummer in the world. 
And it's not about being the best drummer in the world. It's about being the best for the world. And because of those two drumsticks, the things that I've been able to do to benefit the world, to benefit other people through the high school drumline, through the college drumline, the Green Man Group, uh, to now traveling the country, speaking full time as a professional speaker, uh, to, to kids and to adults and conferences and corporations all over the world, inspiring people to live better, all came from that single moment. And, uh, and so I, I too encourage people to find their Mr. Jensen's. Find people that believe in you. Find people that see the best in you. Find people that, that no, won't just blow skirt or smoke up your skirt, but that, that'll be real. That'll tell you the hard things. That'll tell you the things that, that you need to improve on or the things that you should do better at. Uh, and, and be careful on who you choose to surround yourself with uh, and make sure there are people that you trust. That make sure there are people that love you. And, and, and when you do find those people, Ask them two questions. Go to those people and say, number one, tell me what you see when you look at me. And then the second question is, tell me what you see me becoming in my life. So tell me what you see when you look at me is, is tell me what I got. Tell me what you think that I've got inside that's good enough to do something great in this world with. And then the second part is, tell me what you see me becoming with what I've got. Because that's a huge part of motivation for people. You got to believe that who you are is enough and that what you have is enough. You also have to believe that, that, that with what you've got inside is good enough to become something great. That, that you are talented enough to be a great singer. That you are talented enough to be a great dancer. That you are athletic enough to be the, 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 the fastest runner on the football team or to score the touchdown or you are attractive enough and confident enough to go ask that girl out on a date. Have, have that confidence through the belief of other people to do hard things. And I think if we take those moments and we find our Mr. Jensen's and we ask them, you know, tell me what you think. Go to, go to your mom, go to your parent, go to your your, your brother, your sister, your best friend, or your, your boss, or your heroes, whoever they are, people that love you and care about you, and the people that you look up to, and ask them those two questions. And you, you will create single moments in time that will change your life. Um, because we all need somebody to believe in us. Every person is one success story away from a caring somebody. We do, we all need people to see what's possible and to see how great we can become. And especially because we don't always see it within ourselves. And uh, we find it sometimes through the beliefs of others. And there might be some people that are watching this and you might say, I don't have a Mr. Jensen. You know, I don't have people that believe in me. I don't have parents that love me. I don't have heroes in my life. Um, if you are that person, I would encourage you then to go and be a Mr. Jensen. To go and, and, and be a Mr. Jensen for other people. And when you do that, when you believe in other people, when you see the best in other people, when you help people to see what they can become, not so much what they're going to do, but what they can become in their lives, and you breathe that life and that belief into others, others will believe and breathe that life into you. So. Be Mr. Jensen for other people. And uh, uh, like what Zig Ziglar always said, if you help enough people get what they want, eventually you'll get what you want. And so as you believe in other people, people will believe in you. So find your Mr. Jensen and be a Mr. Jensen. It makes all the difference.